As many of you would be aware, Tesla doesn't make a lot of money from its energy side of the business. They get a lot of criticism for that. People say, oh, Tesla, yeah, sure, they have this other side of the business. That's irrelevant because they only make money from cars. However, Tesla has just made some changes. Here is how it is going to make probably hundreds of millions of dollars from its energy storage and change the narrative that Tesla is only a car company. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. I should disclose to you now, I am a Tesla investor. So I'm right here boosting the stock like there's no tomorrow. No, just kidding. No, I'm not trying to boost the stock at all. But if that happens, so be it. Frankly, I'm in it for the long run, though. I'm in it for 10 years minimum. So even if the stock price is boosted, it, to be honest, makes no difference to me whatsoever because I'm not planning on selling tomorrow or any other time soon. In fact, to be honest, 10 years is, is not really even where I'm in it. I'm in it for 20 years. However, if something crazy happened, if Elon Musk dies tomorrow, I would definitely reconsider my position. You know, I'm not some sort of moron who's just going to stick his head in the sand and hold Tesla stock regardless because I'm a brand fan. I love Tesla. I should also disclose to you, I also have shares in NEO, Xpeng, BYD, and also some lithium mining companies. So there you have it. Tesla, what are they doing? Well, they're doing something interesting. They've completely changed their mega packs. They're ramping up production of a new power wall, which will use lithium iron phosphate batteries. And they're basically charging the same price, right? In fact, they're charging a little tiny bit more for the mega pack. The power walls, about the same price. Now they're gonna be using lithium iron phosphate batteries in those power walls. Those batteries are way cheaper for Tesla, even though they do have to be shipped from China to the US. So that could change, that could change, that could change the price based on the new regulations coming in next year or the new inflation act, which is obviously meant to subsidize the battery industry in the United States. Tesla may in fact start using 4680 cells possibly once they ramp production of those batteries up. But for now, Tesla will make more profits, make hay while the sun shines. The reality is Tesla has enormous demand for the power wall. People don't realize just how much demand that they have. I think that demand is going to only increase now that we're seeing people actually pay off their Tesla power walls pretty quickly through doing what? Well, one, saving a boatload of money on these high energy costs. They're using solar to generate their own electricity, but also being part of the Tesla battery network in California, where apparently people are making quite a lot of money by selling their battery energy back to the grid, especially in terms of being a Pika plant. Now being a Pika plant is entirely different from just selling your energy back to the grid on a day-to-day -day basis. When you're operating as a Pika plant, you make a lot more money in emergency type events. You can make like 20 to 30 times more than you would by simply feeding your energy back into the grid. So that's one way that people who buy a power wall can benefit. Obviously, you also benefit from not having to pay for your electricity as well. So Tesla plan on making a lot more money from, from each power wall they sell. And considering the fact they had to actually stop selling them for months this year because they simply couldn't keep up with demand, I think Tesla's gonna make a lot of money there. But now they're doing something else. They've completely changed the size of the mega pack. It has 60% more energy. However, that's a little bit misleading because the pack is now 60% bigger. So whilst you're actually getting more energy in the pack now, Tesla are actually charging more money per kilowatt hour for the pack. Here are the details. Back in 2019, Tesla launched the first mega pack. It was Tesla's third stationary energy storage product after Powerwall and power pack and they started using those batteries straight away in big battery projects like the one in adelaide the big banana our prime minister called it at the time however that battery has made a lot of money for the owners in fact they doubled the size of that battery to make it the biggest battery in the world it was very very quickly eclipsed it's no longer anywhere near the biggest battery in the world but that gives you an idea of the kind of size of projects these batteries are being used in the biggest battery projects in the world a single mega pack unit is 
a container sized three megawatt hour battery system with integrated modules, inverters, and thermal systems. So you're not just getting battery cells here, you're getting a whole system. Tesla claims that the mega pack is 60% more energy dense than its power pack. That's not actually correct. The energy capacity of the old pack is actually 2.6 megawatt hours. Now the new pack has changed. The new pack is now 3.9 megawatt hours, so it's much bigger. That's about 50% more energy capacity in a single pack. But the battery is now six foot longer and 60% heavier at 84,000 pounds. Now we can straight away see what's happened, right? Tesla has simply used lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are heavier than ternary batteries, which is what used to be in the packs. Now, one of the things about ternary batteries, yeah, they're more prone to fire. That's true. And yes, there has been fires at some of these big battery pack locations around the world. That will be a big benefit to Tesla and owners of these batteries, much less likely to catch on fire. Yes, it can still happen, but it's far less likely. So Tesla will save some money there. The governments and businesses installing these packs will save money. That's a good decision in the long run. The other good decision here is the fact that these battery cells cost less money to Tesla. Now, what has actually happened is the energy density of these packs has gone down. Not by much, but it's gone down a bit. And this also shows higher weight, lower energy density. Very, very obvious that their new packs are lithium ion phosphate battery cells. Now, here are the specifications. Two hour duration pack. Power and energy, 1,927 kilowatt, 3,854 kilowatt hours per mega pack. Round trip efficiency, 92%. That's incredible efficiency. Four hour duration, power and energy, 970 kilowatt, 3,878 kilowatt hours per mega pack. Round trip efficiency, 93.5%. So you can see these batteries are more efficient if they're not used at full power. If you use it on the four hour duration, it's 1.5% more efficient than if you use it on a two hour duration. That's interesting to see. Specifications, it's 359 inches wide, 65 inches deep, and 110 inches high, and the weight is 84,000 pounds. Now here's where it gets interesting, and here's where Tesla is changing the scenario for their energy division. Tesla updated Megapack pricing recently. Changes depending on how many mega pack. The price changes depending on how many packs you order. You order more, you get them cheaper. Tesla was charging 1.53 million before. Now they're charging quite a bit more. With the updated bigger pack, remember it's a lot bigger, Tesla has increased the price to 2.4 million for a project with a single pack. Now, obviously a project with more packs is cheaper. For example, a 10 mega pack project costs 19.2 million with 38.5 megawatt hours of capacity. The price per kilowatt hour will go down to 500 US dollars. The price per kilowatt hour has gone up though for a single pack from $591 to $622. So it's gone up by about 5% per pack, but these packs have a lot more size. It's one big pack and it's much cheaper for Tesla to manufacture this because not only is it bigger, but it's also lithium ion phosphate. I believe Tesla has increased their margins on these packs by at least 20%, at least minimal 20%. Now, if you wanna buy 100 mega packs, the price goes down again to 475 US dollars per kilowatt hour. So that shows you there's quite a bit of margin here. $622 per kilowatt hour for one pack, buy 100 plus, you get them for $475 per kilowatt hour. Clearly the significant margin if they can bring the price down that much if you buy a hundred of them, right? The other thing that's happened here that changes the situation in terms of Tesla's profit coming from their energy sector is this. Tesla recently significantly increased Megapack production to 42 per week at Gigafactory Nevada on top of ramping up Megafactory where it plans to produce 40 gigawatt hours of Megapacks per week, 40 gigawatt hours of mega packs per week. That is insane. Tesla recently confirmed that it has all the battery cells it needs for both its energy business and its electric vehicles for the first time ever. So Tesla clearly has secured a massive amount of LFP cells, I'm guessing from CATL most likely. I don't think BYD would have had the capacity to provide them this amount of cells. What does this mean? This means, right, Tesla frees up more of its other cells, its ternary battery cells for its EVs, 
more LFP batteries now pumping into these mega packs, into power walls, and Tesla has, well, increased the price by 5%, even though these packs are much cheaper for Tesla to manufacture. What does that mean? The margins clearly are at least 20%. You can see in the price for the 100 plus packs, it's about 30% less than the price for one. Clearly, Tesla's margins have to be more than the 30%. Otherwise, they couldn't be selling them for that much at the rate where they're selling 100. I think Tesla's energy division, this all points to one thing. Tesla's energy division profits will be much, much higher in the fourth quarter of this year. That's my prediction. I think it's pretty obvious things are trending that way. It's also really important to note, Tesla says it has enough batteries, period. It doesn't need any more. Clearly, it does need more. I mean, it needs more 4680 cells for the Cybertruck. But Tesla saying they have enough batteries tends to make me think that I may be, have been correct when I predicted that the base model of the Cybertruck will also come with lithium iron phosphate battery cells. Very likely, considering these new LFP cells from CATL, the M3P cells have 20% higher energy density for the same price. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, but I'm pretty excited. This is some really interesting stuff. It's great for homeowners, great for new car buyers, and it's also good for Tesla and Tesla shareholders.